Hi guys, Kevin Farrell here, online coach at Complex Fitness and head coach at Full Body Workouts for Scammon. Riscommon Sports Partnership are here to keep Riscommon active and we're just going to go through um, something today which a lot of people are dealing with now at the moment, being at home or being in at work. So that is the desk disaster. So people sitting at their desks all day and a lot of people now that they are working from home, movement has gotten a lot less, activity is a lot less and people are finding themselves very inactive around this time. So we're just going to go through some steps that I've put down. The first are just negatives of being at the desk all day and a lack of movement. So the first thing is, it's posture that happens a lot. So when we're sitting at a desk, we're here, hips crease, shoulders forward. Usually we're on the laptop or we're riding, but we're usually compensating by leaning forward into a comfortable position, maybe elbows on the table. What happens is if we're doing that all day and we're not moving throughout the day or for 30 to 60 minutes throughout the day, what happens is tightness starts to creep in and tightness can lead to pain. Now this isn't going to happen in a day or two, but if this is happening consistently over time and over weeks and months, pain can come about just from being inactive. So what you're probably wondering is how to negate these. And it is really simple. Today we're just going to go over the methods and that is move more. So every 30 minutes, stand up and move. I have a few tips about this. So we're going to go through them all now. So the first one is structure your day so when you wake up uh, it's very simple when you're working from home to stay in your comfortable clothes stay in your sweatpants stay in your pajamas even and just open up the laptop but a bit of structure can change the day completely whether it's getting dressed and uh, knowing what time you're going to eat maybe a little bit of exercise before you even open the laptop so when i say structure the day the best way to do it is to time everything so timing the meals and breaks and timing what time you're going to move and timing what time you're going to work so that could be, look something like you're getting up at eight, you're getting dressed first of all, so you're not staying in the same clothes. You're going out for a 10 minute walk, you come back, you get the breakfast ready and you roll into your work. And you know when you roll into your work at eight o'clock, by 10 o'clock you're up for a half hour break, so on and so forth. So you're gonna plan it throughout the day. Now, throughout this structured day, that every 30 minutes of standing up and move, doesn't have to be a long break. You can literally just get up off the chair, move around, go to another room, maybe step outside for a few minutes, walk around, do any little tasks you, ha tasks you have to do. The next is having a small bottle or glass at the desk. So we should be drinking water throughout the day. A good idea is getting a small bottle or just a glass. And every time it empties, that prompts you to get up fill up the water and come back again. It's just a little unstructured way of coming and going from the desk. Alarm or timer, some people use this method that every 60, every 30 minutes an alarm goes off or else they put the timer on every time they sit down from their small break, whether it's a minute or two break and they go 30 minutes again. And every time you get up and you make sure you're moving and consistently moving. Another idea is on that alarm or timer, you get up and you do 10 push ups. You do a bit of a walk, you come back, do 10 push ups back on the desk just to get moving, just any excuse to get moving. 30 to 60 minutes of planned exercise. So this isn't just your unstructured get up random movement around. This is something where you go out with the intent to move a bit more. So that can be anything from stretching, mobility, yoga. There's loads of stuff online. There's loads of free classes going on at the moment. It can be strength classes. You can go for a walk, a cycle, run, whichever you like, as long as it's planned exercise. It can be light, anything really, walking the dog even. Pick something you enjoy. So this is really important when it comes down to adherence. So if you're going to adhere to something, you're going to have to pick something you enjoy. So if you hate cardio, hate the thoughts of running, maybe you enjoy walking the dog, maybe you enjoy having a puck around, kicking a ball around, throwing a ball. You enjoy any sort of movement that doesn't feel like exercise. Just pick that and have that as your staple every day. Anything is always better than nothing. So just keep that in mind. Going for a short walk is definitely better than doing nothing and sitting in. And then a nourishing diet as well. Of course, when you're timing your meals and breaks now that you're at home and places are closed, it's a great time to kind of get on top of the diet. So a nourishing diet is something that is 80% of unrefined goods. So foods that aren't processed, foods that aren't made for a long shelf life, fresh food, vegetables, fruit, water, nuts, good source of protein in meats, tuna, whatever you like to eat and um, a good source of carbs as well. So we're not depending on packets for carbs or biscuits for carbs that we're having nourishing, a nourishing diet such as potatoes, pasta, rice, whichever you prefer. There's lots of different things out there. 
Now the benefits of all this, so of course first and foremost, foremost, your heart and lung function. So your heart and lungs are the most important muscles in your body and they're very easy to stay on top of and to keep fresh and fit. Simple movement every day, a long walk every day will keep it ticking over. Once or twice a week maybe if you want to push it a bit further and go for a longer cycle or a small jog or maybe get the heart rate up a little bit more. But your heart and lungs are number one so look after them. Improve cognitive function, so of course, the more you exercise, the clearer your mind, the more productive you will be with work. So, if you have a healthy schedule and you make room for exercise, you're gonna find that what took you an hour may only take you 40 minutes now because you're not dilly-dallying around, your mind is fresh, it's clear, and you're ready to go straight into the work. And this will, in time, free up more time for you. Injury prevention, so of course what I spoke about at the start, the tightness, a lot of what happens a lot is around the hip area and the shoulder area. So simple things like standing up straight, make sure when you're sitting that you're sitting straight. Every 30 minutes when you get up to move, make sure you're moving your hips around, you're walking, you're not just staying in this slouched area. So we're going to keep it as simple as that for today. We're just getting up and moving, actively trying to squeeze our shoulder blades together. And trying to move everything in our thoracic so that's our upper back our shoulder blades just trying to get full movement in them simple rolling forward and back with our hips it can be as simple as standing up rotating the hips or else taking a big step out in front and lunging forward lots of little different things as long as we're moving that's the main thing so injury prevention is a massive part of training longevity of course everyone wants to live that little bit longer so it has been proven that those with more Favourable body composition, also known as um, a stronger muscle mass to body fat percentage ratio, do tend to live longer as they negate diseases and different cardiovascular problems. And then their heart and lungs are able to function that little bit better, able to deal with outside threats. Also, of course, your immunity, your immune system will thank you as well. Then, of course, there's the confidence and knock-on. So the confidence in being fit, being that little bit fitter, will bleed into your work life, your home life and everything else. So that's a benefit that's often looked over. Now, where to start? It's probably what you're asking next. So first thing, this is for seven days a week and this is every day. Stretch, mobility, move. You can pick one, you can pick all three. Move is as simple as just a light walk or just moving around. Make sure this is from, this can be anywhere from 10 to 60 minutes. It's totally up to you. If you go onto the Full Body Workhouse Facebook page and you message us there or you email us, we can add you to an email list where we actually have over 20 workouts uh, sent out to people and you can access them all. We have mobility work sent out, so we're on our week three of mobility work, so you'll get a lot of workouts to do there. The mobility only lasts 10 minutes. Anyone can do it. It's very slow, very simple. First thing in the morning, if you knock it out, you'll be ready to go. The move part just like anything else, just move, walk the dog, anything. Two, resistance train. So this I would advise three days a week, two to three days a week. So resistance training people always think is mad strength training. Resistance is anything that causes resistance. It can be body weight. If you have a band, a kettlebell, a dumbbell, a barbell, a plate, a bag of rocks, this can be anything. Now, an easy way to resistance train three days a week is throw on the clock for 15 minutes, get the heart rate up a little, do some push-ups, squats, some sit-ups, Anything you have access to, so any equipment you have access to, some of you might have skipping ropes, a boxing bag, as long as you're moving for the 15 minutes, getting the heart rate up a little bit and trying to build some strength. Keep it simple. Cardio, two days, so this would be your longer winded cardio. Obviously I say move every day, which technically would be cardio, but this is structured cardio, such as a long cycle. Try and get this up on 40 minutes plus if possible. That's a longer walk than usual. A cycle at a bit of a faster pace pace a light jog or just move in with a little bit more intent fourth one then is challenge yourself with this time set a goal have you ever been able to do 10 push-ups three pull-ups one pull-up it can be anything so set yourself a goal whether it's on the scale or performance that's something that will help you focus on the day-to-day -day tasks don't get too bogged down in specific movements just yet again anything is better than nothing so the really important thing here is just that you get moving you get in the habit of moving and then you can start to implement specific movements, specific stretches, specific mobility work for your tight joints, and then start to feed in the rest. But once you have all this put in place from a structure in your day to you know when you're taking your breaks, you're getting your water on board every 30 minutes, 
you're moving every day, you're creating good habits, that's when you begin to fit in the rest. And that is everything. I hope that's helped. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to message me at Complex Fitness on Instagram or message any of us on Full Body Workhouse Facebook page. And that's everything.